friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought it would be fun if we could go through some non-planty things that I use for plants. I feel like sometimes plant stuff can be quite expensive and the sustainable part of my brain is like reuse things and find things so you don't have to buy thousands of things. I use a lot of like non-planty stuff for planty purposes and so I wanted to share with you some of them today. If you're new here and you don't know me already, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet so if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. Another really quick thing before we start, I want to say that there's going to be another, another plant swap coming up. If you didn't know, I created another plant swap with Happy Plant Collectors Lisa in London and we had one in April which was so 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 much fun but we are having another one in October and tickets have just gone on sale. They went on sale yesterday so if you are in the UK and interested in coming to the event it's on the 29th of October from 2 to 6 p.m. and it's gonna be a great time full of plenty friends and fun and just all around a good time. If you want to know more head to the link in the description which will have tickets and information and all that stuff. So yeah, shameless plug over. Let's get into the stuff. I'm gonna start with a very, very obvious one. I think almost every plant parent knows the value of a good jar. Whether it's from like pesto, which is where I like to get my good small jars, or like a pasta sauce jar, which is quite big, or pickle jar. Jars will be your best friend and it kind of, fulfills the like the part of my soul that needs to collect jars. Even before I was into plants, I just, oh, this is a good jar, I'll keep it for something. Now I have a purpose for them. So that is really, really good. Love a good jar. They work really well in like closed systems too. If you wanna have a lid, you can make a terrarium, but I tend to mostly use them as propagation jars for water prop, perlite propping moss propping for whatever really, but jars. Kind of in a similar vein, I'm gonna say plastic cups. I absolutely refuse to buy plastic cups, but if I'm ever anywhere out and there are plastic cups that I have to use because I'm out and they don't give you gloss for some reason, or at the end of a party and there's a bunch in the bin, that sounds kind of gross, but if there's a bunch just like in the bin, I will, <laughs> um, it's gonna embarrassing grab them and rinse them out at the end of the night and bring them home and use them for propagations and stuff like that. They work great for holding stuff in in a clear way so you can like still see the roots and what's going on and help you be aware of like the system or like how much water is in it and I think they're just generally really really good for that kind of thing. They're also really great for traveling and such, like you can take plants and put them in what I like to call the double cup, where it's a cup on top of another cup taped together, and that holds the plant in place so it doesn't really get crushed, so the foliage stays nice. So plastic cups are really, really useful. Like I said, I refuse to buy them because the sustainability mind that I have is like, absolutely not, are you bringing more plastic cups into this world? But I will very gladly reuse them and recycle them to suit my purposes as a plant parent. And so yeah, you can also like cut holes in the bottom and or poke holes in the bottom and give them drainage. But I tend to prefer mine without drainage because I like to usually use them as some sort of water reservoir or for propagation. Another bit of recycling, reusing something that would normally be thrown away is this sort of plasticky mesh that you get around usually onions. Uh, this is from garlic, but it's sort of this like stretchy mesh. And I like to use this at the bottom of like nursery pots. If they've got holes at the bottom for drainage, which is really important, sometimes it can cause the soil to fall out. And especially if I'm using something like pond, which tends to be quite small, like very small rocks that very easily fall through the bottom of the drainage holes. Putting something like this down before you put your substrate in is really, really nice to kind of keep it all in there. And because it's made of plastic, um, it would just go to landfill anyway, and it can't be really be recycled, and it's never gonna like decompose or get gross. So it is 
a great thing that you can reuse over and over and you can cut them smaller for smaller pots or keep them big for bigger pots. They're just super versatile and I never thought the mesh from garlic would be so useful. So now I don't feel as bad about buying garlic in a three pack instead of single bulbs. Next, I think I'm gonna talk about plastic bottles. I mean, they don't have to be plastic bottles, but I find you just randomly get these from like meal deals and stuff. And so sometimes I have them lying around and I like to use these to help water my moss poles. So with my plastic bottles, you can see I have poked holes in the cap and I like to use these to water my moss poles and fertilize them because they will slowly release the liquid, which works better for trying to rehydrate moss poles because moss is somewhat hydrophobic and if you kind of just put water in it too quickly, it'll all just run past it and not actually absorb in. So you need to kind of slowly add the moisture in and putting one of these, filling it with water and typically fertilizer as well, and then putting it upside down on top of the pole to soak through has worked so, so well. I absolutely love this method. I find it so much easier to water and then I don't have to be sitting there slowly watering my moss poles little bit by little bit. I can just put them on top and it'll just slowly soak through, which I really, really like. So that's really good. Another thing I like to use for moss poles is computer Velcro or cable Velcro for cable management. Um, just this stuff here. And I like to use this in place of garden Velcro on my moss poles. So you can see here, down here, I've got some gardening Velcro. And then the next two bits of Velcro I have holding my plant to the moss pole is computer Velcro. And I get this stuff instead of gardening Velcro because it is cheaper, <laughs> honestly. It's essentially the exact same thing. It feels the same to me and it works exactly the same, so why not get the cheaper option? Also, I like that it comes in black because although the plant is green and this kind of blends in, so does the black because it's black. So it, it doesn't bother me at all and you can't even really tell it's there any more than you can tell the green stuff is there. So I think it works perfectly well and I like it. Also, any of the things that I buy, like computer Velcro for plants, that aren't necessarily plenty, I will link down below in the description. Also, I'm very curious about what non-planty things that you use for plants, so what do you use? Let me know down below. I think it's really interesting and I could always use some more ideas, so please tell me. Right, let's carry on. Um, another thing I like to use for plants, which might be a surprise, is a makeup brush. And if you've been here for a while, you probably know that I don't really wear makeup or maybe you think I do. If so, thanks. But I don't really wear makeup. I do have some, but I really, really rarely wear it, only for special occasions. But I have a whole set of makeup brushes that are basically unused. But there are a couple of really good uses for makeup brushes for houseplants. One, using a big sort of fluffy brush like this is great to dust velvety leaves. Velvety leaves are a little bit harder to dust and you shouldn't really wipe them with water. So using a makeup brush to sort of wipe down the leaf works really, really well to get the dust away. For this, I didn't even dust my velvet leaves at all. I just let them sit and be dusty. So I'm really, really glad I found this trick. I actually got this trick from Claire at the Jungle Haven. She uses this and it works so well. You do want to make sure it is clean though. You don't want to be brushing makeup onto your plants. So make sure to use a clean brush. If you don't have one, clean it. And if you want to buy a new one, you can, and that's perfectly fine. You can also use makeup brushes, like a smaller one than this, for pollinating anthuriums. So when anthuriums go into their male stage and produce pollen, you can use a smaller, maybe sort of like eyeshadow size brush to wipe the pollen into a tin foil and like save that until you have a female stage anthurium that you want to pollinate and then you can use that makeup brush again to dip into the pollen and then wipe it onto the female stage inflorescence. So there are surprisingly many uses for makeup brushes within houseplants. So I, these are not going to waste. I didn't spend my money on nothing. <laughs> Another thing that most of you probably know already is just like plastic containers, whether that's 
like takeaway containers from getting delivered food or yogurt containers, this is my favorite one, or even giant storage boxes. Plastic containers are really, really useful when it comes to plants. I find them especially useful for propagation because if they've got a lid, they can provide a nice humid environment, which really, really, really helps promote root growth. And especially with tropical plants, they're gonna really benefit from that higher humidity while you're propagating. And it really allows for an ideal climate for them. So like I said, this is a takeaway container. This big box is from a brand called Really Useful Box, which again, I will link down below. I love this size of box. I just did a, um, was it prop box tour showing you everything I keep in these boxes. I also use this size box as an acclimation box as well. So I really like this size box. I also have a slightly smaller one that's not a really useful box, but just your average <laughs> plastic storage box. Pretty much any of them will do, but I like these ones just because they have a bit more of a locking lid. So yeah, they're really, really good and I like them a lot. And then this sort of yogurt tub. This is my favorite new find recently. Let me, let me show you a bit more about it. So Joe started getting these yogurts and as soon as he started getting them, I was like, can you please save these containers because they are pretty much perfect for small propagations. They're a little bit on the expensive side, but they go on offer quite a lot at Sainsbury's, so we tend to get them then. But I love them for propagation boxes. I think that they are the perfect size for small things. I've got anthurium seeds in this one just like that, in moss. And in this one, I have some peperomia propagations in some soil. They're just the best boxes. They seal really well and provide a great bit of humidity. And also the stickers come off super easily. Any of you who keep storage vessels know that jar stickers can be a pain in the butt if they don't come off easily, but these ones come off super duper easily. So I have so many of these throughout my house. They're also really great for shipping propagations, like of small things, because you can transport them easily and like keep things a bit safe. So I can really talk forever about these yogurt cups. I never thought I'd be so passionate about something like this, but I am, they are simply amazing. I highly recommend if you like yogurt or you're someone you know likes yogurt, yogurt, if you convince them to get this yogurt, you can use these forever and they work so, so well. Another kind of food related item is chopsticks. I have a bunch of reusable chopsticks because I like using chopsticks, but I use these to stake smaller plants just to keep them like upright before I put them on a sort of moss pole or anything like that. So they work really, really well for that. Also, if you have the like sort of wooden takeaway chopsticks, you can use those to test your soil to see how moist it is because you can stick it in and see whether or not the soil is damp based off of how much comes off with the chopstick. I don't think I have any plants right now that are using the chopstick method, but I did have my Birkin on this before. I did end up giving that to a friend who wanted a rehab project, but I did use that to hold it up and it worked perfectly well. And it's just a really easy way to hold your plants up if you need that, if they need a little bit of support, which we all do sometimes. A little bit more advanced version of that is moth poles, but I have recently gotten into making lazy moth poles, which were created by Unplant Parenthood, I believe. I can link her videos down below. And I've been using those since I think March or April time on several of my plants. It's basically where you get a bit of plastic and you create a moss pole without any mesh or anything on the front. It just holds the moss in and your plant can grow up it. I freaking love these and I always get asked where I get the plastic for these. I got it off of Amazon. I have two different sizes. So the A4 stuff I got is this. I'm pretty sure these are just, yeah, they're PVC binding covers, like for reports and stuff. I love these, they're 180 micron, but I really love them, and these are in A4. I also have clear acetate in A3 size, which is 
to 40 micron, but it is a little bit thicker and sturdier, which is great for slightly taller poles, which is what I wanted in getting a bigger size. They're really, really great. I like them a lot and you can buy them in pretty large packs and get quite a lot of moss poles out of them. So I highly recommend. And part of the joy of having the plastic backed moss poles is that you can see the roots through the back, which is amazing. Cause you can really tell that they are starting to cling on and that they are liking the moss pole, which is super helpful. Another good thing about them is that because they are plastic backed, they are less open to air and so they will dry out slower. They are still small, so they tend to dry out faster than my bigger moss poles, but they're still slower than if I just wrap some moss around like a chopstick or a pole or a stake or something. So they work really, really well and I am really enjoying them. I will link my video trying them down below. Give them a go for yourself because I think that they are absolutely fabulous. So that is it. That is all the random non-planty stuff that I use for plants. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And like I said before, let me know what non-planty stuff you use for plants because I'm always looking to reduce, reuse, recycle, figure out creative ways of doing things with random stuff on the internet. <laughs> it's all very fun. So yeah, do let me know if there's some other things you use that I haven't talked about. But yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.